I'm going to show you how to turn 20 of these scooters into a big power wall. All right, so how do we go from the scooter to the power wall? Well, you see, each one of these scooters has batteries inside. This is a battery, and then inside this tube, there's another battery. And there's all kinds of different uh, versions, right? There's another one here. This is a 30 cell from another uh, model of these. And all of these are scooter batteries. So we're gonna turn one particular model of these into a power wall. So let's start. Step one, you gotta install an enclosure for your DIY power wall. Metal enclosures are typically really expensive. And so what I ended up doing here was making my own. And I made a whole video showing you exactly how to make this. You could actually get all these pieces already pre-cut and I show in the video how to just put together. You do need a few tools, like maybe a drill, drill bits, you know, and uh, a rivet uh, maker, you know, and uh, maybe a chop saw to cut some of the aluminum angles that you put in here. But I will link that video on how to make this custom aluminum power wall box in the description of this video. So for now, step one in this video is to install it. So holes on this box. You gotta install the megalodongle. <laughs> That's what we're calling it here in house. This is basically the same product that we have as a single, or double, triple, and quadruple, but this one is much bigger. You can put up to 10 of these batteries, the scooter batteries, and it will handle all the logic that it needs so that you can charge them and discharge them safely and all other stuff, right? So we have two versions of them. We have the master board, and then we have the uh, slave boards. The master one, the only difference between the master and the one is that the master has a meter built in here and it's got a current sensor and stuff and so it will keep track of all the energy that goes into your battery and out of your battery. So this is gonna be the way that you tell what, what your battery is doing and the state of charge and all this other stuff, right? And so then the master one has that and then you could add slave boards to that. So. In this case, we're gonna make a pack that is gonna use 20 of these scooter batteries, right? So we need two of them, right? And so in order to add a second one, we made this little board right here that will just bridges one to the other one. It connects the three main connectors. And you can do that on the bottom and you can do that on the top. So you can just add more slave boards to your master board. And so if you wanna build like a bigger battery, then you can keep doing that. In this case, we're gonna use two of those for 20 packs. So the thing that you have to do is you just have to drill holes like we did here on the side of your enclosure, and then you just screw them from the inside. We're using these standoffs that are made out of plastic so that that keeps it isolated from the metallic uh, surface of this enclosure, and then that way you'll keep it nice and isolated so it doesn't show up. So, we're gonna install this mega dongle into the battery. Line it up, M4 screws. Let's install the inverter now.
So next step is to install the batteries. So these batteries are super, super safe. They have a active BMS inside. And when we're installing them in here, we're using that BMS. Also, these are encased in rubberized compound that is anti, it's a fire retardant and also a thermal compound so that the batteries can get rid of any heat that they can develop. Also, they're inside of this very, very tough weather seal aluminum casing, right? So when you're putting them inside this box right here, you're double boxing them. So these are super safe. Even if one of these ever catches fire, well, first it has to go through the rubber, then it has to go through its own weather seal aluminum casing, and then it has to go through these other <laughs> aluminum casing, right? So. Uh, I think uh, these are some of the safest batteries that you can possibly put in your wall. And they're super easy to install, because look, this is all how you connect them. The small cable, and then the big cable. Just do the thing. Okay. Now here's the thing, while you're connecting these, it's going to try to fill the, since we already have connected the inverter, it's gonna to try to fill the caps in the inverter, but a single battery won't be able to do that. So it might turn on just momentarily and it'll turn off, right? Because it, it exceeds the amount of power that a single one can do. So eventually as you keep connecting them, maybe the whole system will energize, but maybe not. And that's okay because at the very end, you'll just connect the charger and then all of these will wake up and then it'll charge the caps in the inverter and then you'll be ready to go. So that's the procedure. Connect all of the batteries next. Your sensor. So it's a single one. There's 20 packs in here. So you just pick one and then you put it in there. I'm gonna put it on the very top because heat rises. So if this gets really hot inside here, then this will pick it up. And if the batteries get hot, then um, one, even one of these ones, well, it'll generate heat and it'll, this is gonna be kind of like a general temperature, right? And you'll be able to read this on the meter itself. So there you go, just put it on there. Huh. All right, so here it is. It's that simple. You basically install the boxes on the wall, then you install your charger, you install your inverter, and then you connect all your batteries. And then if the batteries are on, right, then you're good to go. I mean, if they're not, then you just plug in the charger and then they'll turn themselves on and then it'll be fine, right? So. Let's run a little bit from others. These things are super, super safe because each one is fused and internally and then externally. And they have a temp temperature sensor in here and uh, they have two circuits, a charging circuit and then I have this charging circuit and they are active battery management systems. So these are about the safest batteries that you can get. So here it is, this is about 10 kilowatt hours and now let's talk about the chargers. The charger is a 36 volt charger and here is one that we've used before and it's uh, super reliable, it's kind of inexpensive. Um, so it's a good charger. Okay, so in this particular project, I didn't end up using that charger, right? And the reason is because I'm trying to cut costs even further. That's a great charger. It's really affordable, you can find it online, it'll be linked on the bottom. But here's what I use. I ended up using the actual chargers that I use to charge scooters. Uh, these are available in large quantities and we were able to source them really, really cheap. And so I build this, and this might be way cheaper than that, but I still have to work out some kinks uh, and some bugs in this thing. So it's not available as of yet, but if you're watching this video in the future, then it might be available, right? So let's move on to the meter. The meter here is included in the master version of the Megalo dongle, right? Or the big dongle that we have here. And so uh, there will likely need to be some uh, setup for this meter so that you can, you know, tune it and, you know, do, you know, sync it 
so that it works. I will have to make another video and I will go into very fine detail on what I had to do to get this running so it works perfect with this setup. Keep an eye open for that, right? So here's the other thing. Uh, we had to work really hard to get these products, you know, developed. There's a lot of testing, there's a lot of trial and error. And so by the time that we're making this video, these batteries now are on a limited basis, right? There's not a ton of them left. And so if you're watching this in the future, well, you might find out that these are sold out. If that happens, then don't worry because there are a ton and a ton of different versions of these scooter batteries. And uh, I will try to keep the links on this video up to date. So just click on the links and hopefully you'll be able to find them, right? This is just my warehouse. It's full of these batteries but by no means I'm the only source in the United States. So there are a ton of people that are making these available. Uh, you know, I might be the best one to get them because I will, I will be able to vet the bad ones and the good ones and we'll try to, you know, do the thing, but definitely keep your eyes open. There are a lot of places and a lot of ways to find really good deals on these batteries. It's never been better to buy batteries. They're, they're never gonna be more expensive than now. They're just gonna keep going down in price. So next, is the inverter let's talk about the inverter the inverter are this is just a regular 36 volt inverter right and there are plenty of them in the market this just happens to be a really affordable one and it's great for the occasional use if you're going to use this setup right here just as a backup right so for the occasional use when the power goes down this is going to be great this is going to work for you now if you're going to use your battery every day and you're going to give it heavy use Probably not the best. It's probably not gonna last very long, right? Just that's just the nature of things. They don't last forever. You buy something affordable, it's not gonna last the same. But not to worry because there are plenty on the market. If you want something more robust and more reliable, you can find something that is better quality. The last thing to do now is just to test it. We're gonna turn all the circuit breakers off, and that's gonna simulate a power outage, and then we're gonna turn this right here, which this is a transfer switch, right? Every building, every house should have this. Unfortunately, they don't, but you could have one of these installed. And this is allows you to very quickly uh, be able to connect a generator, right? That's what they were designed for a generator, but it doesn't matter if you put an inverter, right? It doesn't care where the power is coming, but it allows you to very easily isolate the, the circuits that are, uh, more important to you and so you know at the critical loads you'd be able to put them through here and do that so what's what we're going to do let's turn all the circuits off there we go so now we turn on the inverter Ooh, look at that there's a little light that comes on here and now we start turning on the, the switches. So that's one circuit. That's probably likely like the uh, plugs or the lights out in front, I think. These are the lights here on the warehouse. Oh, look at that, that thing turned itself off. Okay. Now even the plugs here on the warehouse there we go, that's something that had a load because the, they flickered. And there we go. So now we have all our critical loads running off of this inverter. And it's not running much, like, let's see. Okay, so in the custom cable that I made so that you can connect the inverter to that, I also have a little meter. And so this one is gonna show you, it has some analog uh, meters here and it tells you that you're running about 600 uh, watts from that one leg, right? So this one, actually look at that, it matches 641 watts at 120 volts, 5.38 uh, amps of current, right? So. There we go, we're just running a small load. Basically the lights are here. There's not a lot happening on this warehouse right now. But if the power goes out and we need to come in here and we need to work, no problem. You just flip those switches, you're up and running. So every house should be like that. And if you want to get uh, a backup 
power. This is the easiest way to do it. So the last thing is to put the cover on. There we go. 